Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischl. This is going to be episode 170 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 1-3 and 2-5 session at the Sarasota Poker Club. I have a ton of actually very interesting hands to go over, so we're going to get right into it. We start out today at the 1-3 table at the one Eye Jacks Poker Room in Sarasota, Florida, before the first hand of note. I am under the gun. I raised the $12 of pocket jacks. A middle position player, the cutoff, and the small blind call. So we end up going four ways to a flop of king, queen, deuce with two clubs. Obviously not my favorite board. Two overs is pretty bad, but this is pretty good for my range. Thinking my opponents will fold if they don't have exactly a king. Hands like queen 10, queen 9, and all the ace x that do not include a pair will definitely fold to a c bet. So I continue for $25. It's unfortunate for me that the cutoff decides to min raise to 50 and then the small blind decides to call. So now I'm getting a pretty horrible situation. Third pair is probably never good on this board. I somewhat disappointingly let it go, even though I have some playability left with some backdoor straight possibilities. I am immediately punished when the turn is the Jack of Diamonds, and the cutoff continues for another bet of 50. If my opponent just calls the flop, I definitely win this hand, almost guaranteed. Small blind calls the 50, I'm seeing all the money that would have been, but the river is the 10 of hearts. Now I feel pretty fine with my fold, and my opponents can have ace-x and just have the nuts now. But it goes check-check, and I'm versing king-queen and jack-10. So would have had the best hand here, would have made some money. Wish the king-queen would have just called flop instead of raised, but he plays perfectly on this one. Following that, it is a button straddle. There are two calls. I check my option with queen four off suit, and the flop comes queen seven three. Two diamonds. Middle position leads out for five dollars. That's not going to be enough. I raise to 20. He makes the call. Turn is the bink four of hearts. Not going to stop betting. Hopefully my opponent has a queen x, a diamond draw, maybe four or five or six four for an optimistic gut shot. Either way, I continue for $30. My opponent makes the call. The river is the ace of clubs. Not my favorite for obvious reasons. Even worse when my opponent just leads for 100. I do think my opponent can have any ace x of diamonds hands and think that his top pair is good. Either way, it's a limp pot. I can't really fold two pair, so I make the call. And he has ace seven. So he calls twice with a pair and rivers a second pair. Pretty good for my opponent getting two pair over two pair in this one. Following that, some very ridiculous pre-flop action with one limp i raised to 15 dollars in middle position with jack nine of diamonds the cutoff and the small blind call the big blind min raises to 30 the first limper folds the button calls and then the small blind folds so a lot of strange pre-flop actions happen so far but we are three ways to a 10 7 3 2 spade board the pre-flop min three better checks to me and now I think it's just the green light to go. Because it's a 3-bet pot, no one should really have cards this small. I obviously don't connect with a meaningful way, but I can continue my story on any spade, 6, 8, 9, jack. A king I probably checked the turn, but on this flop, I'm going to bet $45. Trying to rep all the sets, top pair good kicker, even jacks and queens. I'm not sure I 4-bet them all too often, so I think I have those in range as well. The $45 seems to be good enough as the button folds and then the preflop min 3 better folds as well. So pretty creative bluff through. This one works out pretty well. Next hand of note. I'm on the button. I have pocket 10s. With a $5 button straddle, there are three limps. $5 is not going to be enough. I raise to $20. Only one middle position limper decides to call. So we're heads up to a flop, which comes queen 9, 5, 2 clubs. Well, my opponent just leads into me for $25. And I suppose he has a queen here a decent percentage of the time, but I think it's just a mistake to fold to a single bet when my opponent could theoretically have a nine, maybe some clubs trying to name his own price, maybe just ace king because people at 1-3 play kind of goofy. When I make the call, the turn is the eight of diamonds. Seems pretty good. Pick up a gut shot to essentially the nuts. My opponent shouldn't have king 10 here pretty much ever. And my opponent slows down a little bit. He bets 30. Not a large bet by any means. I don't think I'm getting quite the right price to call in this spot, but I do think that there's enough implied odds where I can make this profitable the times I hit. So I decided to call the $30, and we bink the river, jack of hearts. I expect my opponent to check here a lot of the time as there's a four-liner on the board, but he surprises me by betting $50. Well, that's good for me. It's going to be more than $50, though. I announce $160, standard 3x raise with a little bit on top. 
Maybe my opponent has exactly queen jack and has two pair, willing to pay off a bet. My opponent calls pretty quickly. I just show the pocket tens. He shows queen deuce. So suppose there was no bluffing opportunity on this river had a king or ace come. He was probably just going to call if he's going to call when there's a four liner out there. Either way, happy to have the hand, get paid, and we are moving in the right direction. Following that, I'm in middle position with one limp. I have queen six of diamonds. Happy to mix it up at the lower stakes games, give action, make video content. Queen six is going to be a raise to $15. The button calls and the limpers call, so we go three ways to a flop of 10, 8, 7, all diamonds. Flopping a flush seems pretty good. When it checks to me, I think that monotone boards, I would check my range a lot of the time. So I have to check when I actually have a flush as well. When I check the button, bets $25. And then the early position limper decides to call. Well, we don't want these people to be able to see a turn card for cheap. Either one of these opponents can have the naked king, naked ace of diamonds, maybe some sets, maybe some two pairs, all of which have a decent amount of equity, so we're going to charge them. I raised to $80. The button folds. Maybe he was just betting because it was checked to him, but the middle position limper decides to call. All right, dealer, can I not get a devastating card one single time? Turn is the nine of hearts. Doesn't change my relative hand strength. If my opponent had the jack of diamonds, maybe he's just never folding now but regardless the board's unpaired i still have a flush my opponent checks to me time to size up i bet 180 dollars my opponent visibly looks distressed audibly says how it's such a good bet how he doesn't know if he can continue or not and eventually he ends up folding showing the ace of diamonds so we'll take it i mean that he still had a decent amount of outs to crack me so we will take the win uncontested next hand of note with one limp, the button raises to $6. I'm in the big blind with pocket kings. Six is not going to be enough. I make it $26. The limper decides to fold, but the button decides to call. So we're going heads up to a flop of 10, 9, 7, rainbow. Very much not a board where I think over pairs perform too well. My opponent has all the two pairs, sets, and made straights in range. I really have none of them, so I think it's a pretty natural check and reevaluate. When I check, my opponent bets $20. Well, I did not check to fold, so I called the $20. Turn is the five of clubs. Doesn't change a whole lot. Relatively still comfortable with my hand at this point. But when I check, my opponent bets $50. Okay, we're still not folding kings because it's an overpair and it's likely the best hand. And the river is the eight of clubs. Makes a four liner. Clubs complete. That's disappointing. And my opponent bets $100. Not my favorite spot, obviously. I don't really think two pair ever bets here, but the eight makes hands like exactly pocket jacks. Additionally, 10 jack and 10 eight, I think play the same way at some frequency. Not really too concerned about backdoor club draws, but I mean, how many triple barrels are there where it's just pure air? So I eventually decided to give my opponent credit and just let it go. Would have called on many different river cards. That's not one of them. And my opponent shows ace three of spades. So he chose probably the worst combination of cards possible to go for a bluff. When bluffing, he needs to hope that I have like an ace-x hand that can fold. But when he blocks most of my misses and I'm relegated to value, I guess you just have to hope for a super dangerous run out and me not feel like putting the money in there. Either way, it was an impressive play by my opponent and he is rewarded with the pot on this one. So we're into this game for $500, made about 50 across an hour to an hour and a half before the 2-5 game is called, so we top up our stack a little bit, prepared to battle in the bigger streets. First hand at 2-5, the hijack makes it $20, the cutoff and button call, I'm in the big blind with jack 10 of hearts, thinks it plays fine multi-way, so I'm just going to call, no need to 3-bet, and we end up going 4 ways to a flop of 8 Four, four with two diamonds. I check it in flow and the preflop aggressor checks. The other two late position players check. We are still four ways to a turn card, which is the 10 of spades. So now that we have top pair, decent kicker, plenty of draws get value from Jack nine, nine, seven, all the gut shots, six, seven, five, six diamonds. You get the idea. We're going closer to pot on this one. I bet $65. Well, the hijack decides to call, not ideal. Cutoff folds. And the button calls as well. So hoping for a clean river card to be able to continue. But we get a very, very dirty one in the King of Diamonds. If my opponents were peeling with random ace kings and king x's, well, 
those get there as well as the obvious diamond draw so i check really not expecting to win this hand all too often the hijack checks and then the button checks so maybe i'm good nope hijack has six seven of diamonds chose not to bet i guess he was hoping the hijack would do it for him but a flush is definitely good on this one following that i'm in the small blind with eight nine of diamonds the cutoff makes it 25 dollars. the button calls i call them small blind we end up going three ways to a flop of ace seven six two diamonds flopping a flush draw gut shot straight flush draw we're feeling good about our hand i check it i do not have the pre-flop aggression it checks to the button who throws out 25 dollars this opponent, I would say, is definitely on the tighter side. I really don't see him having anything less than an ace here. I'm not really sure I can get that to fold to a raise, so I think I'm kind of relegated to just trying to realize my equity, even though this is probably the best candidate to raise semi-bluff. I choose to just call, hope to connect on the turn card. Cutoff continues as well, so we're three ways to a turn. It is a deuce of clubs, as brick as it possibly could be. Even like a 10 or a jack gives me double gutted, so plenty of better cards. But either way, I check in flow, and now the button decides to bet $50. Still not going to fold, 13 outs to probably the best hand, so I make the call, and the cutoff decides to fold. The river completes my draw. I get the queen of diamonds, beautiful card. I think this opponent will check back with an ace almost all the time, so we can't let that happen. I lead for $160. I suppose I would do this if I had 6-8 no diamonds or 6-4 no diamonds at some small frequency. I do think I have bluffs here, so we're going to do it when we actually have the flush. And when I lead, my opponent pretty quickly folds, so maybe I bet too much. Maybe he just was never calling anything. But we take a win, so we'll take it. Next hand of note. And this is probably the hand of the vlog. I have the king of diamonds, queen of hearts, and with two limps, I raise $35 from the cutoff. The button, small blind, and limper decide to call. So we end up going four ways to a flop of queen 10-4 rainbow. Having top pair, when it checks to me, definitely want to put, up, put out a bet here. Thin the field a little bit. I fire $85 into the middle. The button decides to fold. The blind decides to fold. And then the middle position limper decides to call. Okay, hopefully we get a safe turn card. Turn is the deuce of hearts. As brick as it could possibly be. When my opponent checks to me, I think there's so many draws to get value from. I don't think I can check this one back. Jack 9, King Jack, hearts. My opponent can even have like Ace Jack or Jack 8 here. Things like that. So we're going to continue. I bet $220. After a bit of thinking, my opponent decides to make the call. And the river is the 9 of clubs. Not a particularly bad one. However, after 20 seconds of thinking, my opponent decides to lead jam. And he has me covered, so it's about $700 effective. And this puts me deep into the tank, I think for over a minute on this one. I think pocket fours would have announced themselves a little earlier. I think queen 10 is possible, but also probably announces itself earlier. Queen 9 definitely jumps out at me as a candidate that can happen. 10-9 I don't expect all too often because... I don't think a 10 can call the turn all that often unless he has exactly 10 9 of hearts which the more i thought about it seemed like the most reasonable hand he could have here having the queen of hearts specifically means he can't have queen x of hearts king jack for the nuts i block which makes this jam even more suspect in my mind how can he lead jam this river when i could easily just have king jack and play it the exact same way maybe my opponent has jack nine and is just turning it into a super interesting bluff with a nut blocker comment below if you think that this is a call or a fold after a minute of thinking i just think my opponent knows that i would call with single pairs some of the time so i think he's less likely to be making a move here in general and it's hard for me to imagine even bluffing combinations that make sense besides maybe jack nine of hearts specifically out loud i audibly say how this is just a pure call how i need to make this call how this has to be a call but eventually i put my cards in the middle and let my opponent have it to which he promptly shows the 10 8 of hearts in my mouth so Ooh. Ah! oh god ah! Ah! <sighs> today is the day of people bluffing kyle Ugh not great next interesting hand i have eight nine of diamonds with a button straddle there are two limbs i may get 45 dollars in the hijack the button the big blind and the middle position player call so we end up going four ways to a flop of jack 10 four two spades and one diamond 
So open-ended backdoor diamond draw seems like a great opportunity for me to bet here. When it checks to me, I bet $100. I think this is going to thin the field a lot. A lot of 10x are going to fold. Jack, probably not. Maybe King Queen probably continues. Somewhat surprising to see the big blind and the middle position player decide to call. So we're going three ways to a turn card, which is absolutely horrible. Jack of clubs. Any of these opponents can have a random jack, and I think it doesn't connect to my range all too well in general. If I had aces, kings, queens, I think this is a natural check on this turn card. Don't think i fire at all if I had an overpair. So I'm just going to try to realize some equity with my straight draw as well. Hand gets very interesting when the river is the jack of diamonds. And now the player in the big blind leads out for $225. When the middle boost player folds, I think this actually opens the door up to me to do a raise bluff. That idea is literally the greatest idea I have ever heard in my life. I believe that I would play queens, kings, aces the exact same way, so I have all the top full houses in range. I think that if my opponent has a 10, he's going to fold some of the time. And this opponent definitely has the ability to bluff. He could easily have just ace, queen of spades, queen, king of spades, and all of those combinations that are unsuited that just peeled flop with overs and a gut shot straight draw. So I think my opponent has bluffs here. I think I have the best full houses in range. My opponent really can't as he limped. So we're going to go for it. I announce $600. And before I can get my chips out there, my opponent goes all in. God, he immediately called your bluff. That is quite frustrating. You go for a creative raise bluff, get punished immediately. You torch a big portion of your money. And I have no reason to tank in Hollywood and stuff. I just fold very, very quickly to this action. My opponent ends up not showing his cards, which in general, I'd say if your opponent had quads, they just would show. Maybe he was just unwilling to fold a 10. I'm really unsure. The one silver lining for this hand is that I will have bluffs anytime at any river, any turn. No matter what the runout is, I will have bluffs. So maybe next time I'll actually have it and get paid. So that's nice. Following that, I look down at ace, queen of spades in the big blind. Under the gun player limps, a late position player raises to 30. I think three betting is fine, but out of position, I'd rather keep the pot smaller and more manageable. So I choose to just call. And then the under the gun limper calls as well. We end up going three ways to an ace, three, six rainbow board. Thinking I have an absolute hammer lock on this hand should never be losing here ever. I check it as I don't have the preflop aggression. The preflop aggressor checks it back, and the turn is the four of spades. Thinking I go for a kind of creative check raise in this spot. That idea is terrible. I, I think that the preflop aggressor will can, will bet now if he had like tens, jacks, any of the milling pocket pairs, as well as his weakest like ace, jack, ace, ten holdings. And I'm not really worried about any river cards, so I check, preparing for a really fun check raise, but it checks through again. Okay. The river is the eight of diamonds, somewhat connected, but not too scary as seven five was already a straight and nothing else really should get there. So I bet $55 and the under the gun limper decides to raise to 160. Well, this is a really dumb spot. My hand is so under wrapped. It's disgustingly strong in this spot. I do think my opponent might raise here for value with ace 10 ace jack any hand that he was playing somewhat passively hoping to do a similar trappy move like me additionally since i've been buried so far in this session i actually expect my opponent to bluff more often than usual if he had like 10 jack of spades king x of spades 8x of spades i think all that raise here as well thinking that they're likely just gonna get me to fold because i've been kind of beat up a bit at this spot so i decided to make the call and my opponent has pocket eights so what a fun river card to get two outed. Ugh, gross. Following that, I have pocket eights. When I bunch trail with $10, the big blind limps, middle position makes it 45. I call the 45, and then the big blind makes it 210. Well, I won't be continuing here. It's just another $45 that are going the other direction. A few hands like that get expensive after a while. And for a final hand of no. I have pocket queens. Definitely time to turn the session around. I make it $20 from middle position. Lay position calls, and then the small blind makes it $100. Could 4-bet with queens, but I have position. 
I don't really think I have a four betting range, so I think I have to relegate most of my hands to just calls. And this opponent can get way out of line with his three bets to begin with, so I would like to keep him in here and play the rest of the hand. When I call the 100, the late position player gets out of the way. We are heads up to an ace, eight, seven, two spade board. I do have the queen of spades, which is somewhat relevant, I guess. When my opponent checks to me, I actually expect him to check most of his aces here. So I'm not really happy to see a check. I'd rather him just bet. At that point, I'd more think I was against like king, queen, or random pocket tens, things like that. So I'm just going to check it back, hopefully hit a spade, get closer to showdown. But the turn is the three of diamonds. No help to me. My opponent bets $110. Well, it's not very good to fold to a single bet. My hand's under repped. It's losing to all of his aces. Maybe the only real justification is I didn't really want to fold queens here. So I call the $110 and the river is the five of clubs. So board doesn't really change from the flop onward. My opponent checks to me. I really don't think this opponent folds an ace ever. I do beat jacks, tens, nines, few hands. So I check somewhat saying out loud, I don't really think I'm winning here. And sure enough, my opponent has ace queen. So the old three outer again will continue to crush me on this day we end up booking a twenty three hundred dollar loss on this day which across five hours equates to four hundred and sixty dollars an hour or 92 big blinds an hour yeah today was a day where most of my opponents chose their opportunities to get very out of line with some very unique and less than standard bluff lines against me wish they would have chose different opponents but you know it is part of the game Maybe next time I'll actually have it. Or maybe my opponents will choose their bluff lines against other people. Either way, this one is quite an L. Hopefully, I'll be able to bring it back on the next one. Thank you.